story this hour. The U.S. Navy has destroyed an Iranian drone. President Donald Trump says the aircraft threatened by the USS Boxer by fi- flying too close. Tensions are high in the Gulf region with fears that the United States and Iran could stumble into war. A suicide bomb attack has rocked a police headquarters in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Taliban fighters detonated two car bombs while six gunmen stormed the building. Gunmen ambushed an elite commando unit, killing 34 people, wounding more than 80 others, including women and children. The Taliban is claiming responsibility for today's attack. Officials there say they targeted the police's narcotics wing. Afghanistan's second largest city, Kandahar, was the former seat of the Taliban. The U.S.-led coalition forces removed them from the city in 2001. Today's attack comes as U.S. officials continue to hold peace talks with the group. Let's take you to the Afghan capital now. We're joined via Skype by the Kabul Times Daily Chief Editor, Hamidullah Arefi. A very good evening to you, Mr. Arefi. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, do you want to give us an update on uh, the latest with regards to the death toll and casualties? Thank you so much. Uh, there was a clean pump blast in Kandahar today. Uh, the first occurred around 4 p.m. and uh, they were aimed to uh, detonate the entrance the gate and then the fighters were supposed to get inside. But uh, they couldn't stop because the uh, police tried to uh, target them. So uh, the, uh, the clash was going on at that time. Then the second power pump blast uh, occurred at the same area, at the same area. And they were aimed to, to uh, ease uh, their fighters to, to go inside the police headquarters in Kandahar. So uh, there were some uh, six uh, gunmen. They stormed the headquarter compound and they went uh, to the uh, counter uh unit. So the clash was going on for uh, more than three to four hours. Uh, so what we have the casualty figures now is 94 people killed and went into this attack. So uh, three were police men and three poli- uh, other police were injured. And uh, we have uh, nine civilians uh, killed today and police in uh, Blast in Kandahar. And uh, some around 80 other uh, civilians were injured, with uh, uh, four uh, women and nine children were among them. Mr. Arifi, we saw at least 20 special forces being uh, killed yesterday in, a, uh, in an apparent Taliban ambush. So do we know if today's attack is a retaliatory measure? Actually, uh, uh, you might better know that Taliban uh, somehow would like to gain ground against Afghan forces and they also put pressure on Afghan government and made peace talks with the United States. Uh, so uh, there were some members on Afghan special forces yesterday in Gulf East in the, in the west of Afghanistan, uh, and they carried out this attack also at the same time on the police headquarters, only to show that they have upper hand on the uh, uh, ongoing political situation, security situation in Afghanistan, and they would like to have uh, want to also get credit for what they are doing in the peace talks. We know Kandahar is the former seat of the Taliban, uh, who ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001 until they, they, they were removed by a U.S.-led coalition uh, in 2001. Uh, could this be a, a, perhaps a pursuit of the war against the United States, or is it uh, other issues that we may not know of? Actually, uh, when uh, former uh, Taliban uh, Kandahar police chief uh, Mr. Razer uh, when he was alive, uh, actually, there was some uh, uh, very good security in, uh, in Kandahar, which was one of the uh, strongholds for the Taliban at that area. So now the police chief is the acting police chief, and he's the brother of the uh, late, uh, uh, I mean, uh, that uh, former uh, police chief. So uh, uh, this is somehow uh, some uh, uh, some of the party wars now that is going on. Uh, some of, uh, uh, despite of regional and international efforts for peace, there are some also the rivalries within some of the regional countries that they have they somehow want to involve themselves in the ongoing uh, 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 thought. As you might know that Iran is a lot of the labor of Afghanistan. So we, we also see that there are some U.S. and Iran uh, 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 
Mr. Rafi, your, your line is not the best there. I hope you could hear me clearly now. We've seen uh, peace talks uh, being ongoing between the United States and Taliban since October last year. But uh, instead, we've seen a continued escalation of the violence in Afghanistan. So which, which of the parties are refusing to back down? What seems to be the problem here? Uh, can you? I hope you better understand me now. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, uh, you might know that this uh, effort is done by, by the regional and international uh, countries, and uh, the aim is to, uh, to put in the ongoing uh, war in a bloodshed uh, campaign and war in Afghanistan, which uh, already, uh, uh, like, uh, passing is four decades. So a uh, uh, main aim is to put an end to the ongoing uh, blasted campaign. But Taliban is seeking uh, to uh, negotiate directly with the Afghan government, which is the main party uh, or the main side of the ongoing conflict here. So uh, the, uh, that would be it. But uh, at the same time, the government is also conducting some uh, operations against the Taliban. It was further pressure on the group uh, to join uh, intra uh, I mean, face to face the talks with the Afghan government. So uh, we have seen that there were two uh, previous uh, meetings held directly with the Afghan uh, politicians in Moscow and the recent one was held in Doha, which was participated by the several activists activists uh, that is not only Moscow and tell that they have not uh, any government representatives in these parts. So we cannot expect any positive uh, results from this part. Mr. Arifi, unfortunately, we have to end there. Uh, the line is not the best. But thank you so much for your time. There is political analyst and chief editor of the Kabul Times Daily, Hamidullah Arifi, speaking to us live via Skype.